Hey guys, so Mortal Kombat Complete Edition just released on PC. This is the Steam version I'm playing right now. And, uh, just thought I'd do a quick video, just showing some of the basics here. Um, so I'm a huge fan of Mortal Kombat, I have been ever since I was a kid. Uh, both the gameplay and the, uh, even the story, if you can believe it. Um, it's silly, but, you know, entertaining, and this, this job does, uh, this, uh, this game does a really good job of uh of uh, presenting the story the story mode is fantastic one of the best ever in fighting games at least in my opinion so i figured i'll just uh you know play through the story mode while you know uh just explaining some of the story as well as some of the uh gameplay as we go along uh since i'm a fan of both i can do a reasonably good job of uh explaining uh both uh, both the gameplay and the story here but before we get to that, I'm just going to go over some of the basic features of this game and some of its mechanics. So, um, uh, let's just go to the options first and look at some of the video options here. So for the resolution, you can jack it up all the way to 1080p here. Um, uh, just, I'm just going to leave it here at what the console versions were at 720. Uh, I'm going to keep these relatively low just because I want to maintain a steady frame rate that's costs probably the most important thing that you want in a fighting game is just for it to have a constant 60 frames per second so I don't really care about any of these uh, any of these higher level details of anti-aliasing or transparency anti-aliasing so we'll just keep that as a medium and uh, see how it goes uh, as far as controllers go, I'm using the 360 controller. Um, that's probably not the best controller to use. It's just kind of you know useful because it it's perfectly compatible. Um, but you know, I I recommend either a controller or an arcade stick for this game. Uh, it's not like Street Fighter where you know basically an arcade stick is essential because of these quarter circle and half circle motions. Um, in Mortal Kombat, it's basically very simple motions, just back forward, down forward, down back, stuff like that, very easy to do. Uh, so any controller with a D-pad will work fine. Uh, here's the default controls for the 360 controller. I recommend you don't change them unless you know what you're doing, just because, you know, it's, uh, they, it's the way they have it set up works perfectly fine for the controller, and, uh, it's kind of a pain to uh, change back and forth, so uh, we'll just keep that as it is. And go to gameplay here. We'll just yeah, we'll keep this at default. Um, and so let's just jump into training mode here. And before we go to the tutorial, we'll just enter practice, and I'll uh, show off some of the the really basic stuff that you can do. Uh, so here we are, character select screen. Everybody's unlocked from the start. Um, even the four DLC characters, you have them all here. Uh, Cyber Sub Zero and Quan Chi, they were both unlockable in the vanilla release. They're both available from the start here. And as well as uh, costumes, you can select their alternate costume. Some even have DLC costumes. Um, so you can see there. A katana, Jade, uh, their MK2 and MK1. Uh, we're just going to start uh, with Scorpion here. By far the most popular character, uh, at least online, in the console versions of this game. And uh, let's go against his arch rival. Of course, if you uh, care about the story, you'd know that. Uh, Sub Zero. Sub Zero. Okay, so. This game has basically four attack buttons. They are front punch, back punch, front kick, and back kick. Uh, unfortunately, that gets really annoying to use, so the community has come up with a much easier numerical a way to describe those moves. So you have um, front punch, which is defaultly mapped to X on the 360 controller. That is referred to as 1. The back punch, which is Y on the 360 controller, is referred to as 2. The front kick, which is A, 
is three, and of course the back kick, uh, which is B, is called four. So you have one, two, three, and four. Uh, each character has their own, you know, unique set of those. You have to do different things with each character, and but that's basically it. Uh, as far as universal moves for each character, everyone has an uppercut. Classic MK uppercut is back. I know they kind of uh, got away from that in the 3D games, but you know it's back at this one. And uh, quite frankly, I'm really glad to see it return. It's basically a defining mechanic of the MK series. Uh, it's basically universally used and stop pretty much anybody from a jumping attack. So can be used as an anti-air in pretty much, or at least in most situations. Uh, as far as other returning moves is the uh, sweep. Oops, sorry. Uh, the sweep is back, back four. The uppercut is down sweep, perhaps mention, and the sweep is back four. Uh, so those uh, moves every character will have. In fact, we, we Go to AI options and we switch it to human controlled. I can now control, sorry, uh, if we switch it to human control. Oh, okay, yeah, so you need a second controller for it to do that. Yeah, this game's practice mode is a little, uh, you know, it's not the best practice mode, uh, so it, you can't really do much in it. I'm gonna do uh, as much as I can to show some some things off uh, here. So here you can adjust their block and their uh, basically movement. Just right now we'll just leave him at uh, standing and not blocking here. So here we have his front punch, uh, you know, hitting him. So those you see on the screen, uh, they come up as high. So a high attack will hit a standing oppo opponent, uh, and they will also get blocked by a stand blocking opponent. So if we set him to block, he will he is blocking those attacks. So one and two are both high attacks that are uh, blocked when standing. Now if we set him to uh, ducking, you can see that these attacks will not hit him. Now there is a certain, I don't know, I don't know if it's a bug or design decision, but if you press one close, he still blocks it even though he's ducking. So it's not really a true high. Um, you know, we don't, you don't really need to worry about that unless, uh, you know, it's high level play. It's not really that important, but you can see that two completely misses no matter what. That is a true high. Uh, so, here you have low attacks, you're down 3, down 4, uh, and the sweep of course, those are all low. They will hit the opponent when they are duck blocking. And, uh, well they won't, they, the opponent will block those attacks if they are duck blocking. Uh, if they are stand blocking, those attacks will hit, so if I, uh, set him to stand again, they see that sweep is hitting him, even though he's blocking, because it's a low attack. Now, if we set him back to duck, he can block this attack, and this attack won't hit him. So what can we do to actually hit this opponent? Well, we have another type of attack, um, just like Scorpion has one, uh, back to battle, hits medium. Now, mediums in this game, they basically function as overheads in most other games. As in, they will hit other, uh, they will hit opponents with uh, duck blocking. Uh, he, Scorpion also has other ones, such as this one. And you know, he has a various assortment of lows, overheads, and highs. And basically, those are all used to mix up your opponent and uh, you know get them blocking in different directions, so you can basically lead into a, a combo. Um, for example, you know he's duck blocking. He thinks he's safe. Go overhead. And jump kick and throw. Uh, that's another it's easy 14. It's very simple combo, 14% damage. Um, so that's about it as far as basics go. Uh, so let's just jump uh, back to the uh, tutorial here. 
go to training and uh, dot tutorial. Okay, so basically just some basic movements, stepping and jumping here. Uh, dashing. Now dashing is very important just because, you know, you can cover a lot of screen space really quickly, like that. Uh, you know, they're not, they don't, the back dashes especially don't really go that far, but, uh, you know, it's still, it's still a good way to get out of the way. Uh, here I'm just gonna use, uh, just have to just avoid his missiles by ducking and dashing here. So here I just, this is what I already mentioned here, these are your 1, 2, 3, 4 attacks, uh, and 5th attack is, or 5th uh, button is used to block here. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and block. And you're block. So, uh, here's your upgrade. But I should just mention that, uh, the, since this game does have a block button, it kind of introduces uh, some things that you might not be familiar with. For example, a Street Fighter or Marvel vs. Capcom, or uh, you know a, a lot of other fighting games, or Injustice even for uh, the new NetherRealm game on consoles. Um, it's uh, they use back to block or down back to block. Um, this game, since it has a block button. Uh, you, it's uh, you know has some consequences to that. So in in the games I just mentioned, which you use back to block, for example, if you jump, uh, if you jump over your opponent and you hit them on the other side uh, with a, with a jumping attack, that's called the cross up, which means that the opponent, if they were holding back and they're about to get crossed up, they would need to switch and block to the other side in order to block the cross up. In in or in this game. Uh, if you just hold block, uh, since it's a dedicated button and there's no directional input, uh, you will block no matter what. So there are no cross-ups in this game. Uh, if you attack from the other side, your character will simply just auto-correct to the other side and uh, block it. Uh, so it makes it, I would say it makes it a lot easier, especially for beginners. Uh, the blocking is very simple. Uh, the other thing with the blocking is Basically, dashes can be cancelled uh, into a block. So if I try to dash forward and I realize, uh oh, my opponent is, you know, the sector is going to throw a missile at me. So in the middle of my dash, I can just, just go straight into a block. And that's a good way to just approach safely, you know, especially against uh, characters who throw a lot of projectiles. Um, so here we go, I just mentioned these are universal moves, you don't cut in your sweep. And here's your pop-up. So here you can see that uh, that pop-up basically left him in a juggle state. Uh, and that's basically where the meat of this game lies. Most of uh, most of your you know high damage and combos are gonna come from juggles. So you saw there uh, your back three by Johnny Cage, that that uh, move, that normal move, uh, led Sector into a juggle state. So here, it's gonna just, I can do a pop-up, and now I can, uh, um, not the best example here, but, uh, I can basically combo after that. So here again, this is another string, uh, so each character has their own combo strings, I don't know if it'll, if you go, go to the Johnny Cage's move list, he has that 1 1 1 string. So it's 1 1 forward 1, 1 1 4, uh, 1 3 2, uh, 2 1 forward 2, uh, 2 1 back 4, uh, forward 3 2, 4 4, uh, forward 3 3, back 3. And uh, yeah, those are his. So each one has, each character has their own set of these. Uh, basic strings, and they all have different properties, as we'll see. 
uh, here. So his one one one. So here's his one one forward one. And his one one four. One one four. His one three two. Sorry, I'm getting some uh, frame frame drops here again. Uh, uh, Hard to do this simple, very simple combo here, but there you go. And your uh, two one back four. So he saw there that one ended in a low. So uh, you can use that to make opponents here. This one I believe ends in overhead. Uh, your two one forward two. There you go. That last hit was over. I know that it doesn't show you on the screen, but. I've played this game enough, and you know, I know though that was an overhead and the one before was a low. Plus you can just tell by uh, looking at it after you, you know, basically get used to the game. Uh, here we get to the throw system here. Um, so I forgot to mention before, it was four attack buttons. A fifth button is block, and the sixth button is uh, your stance switch, which by itself doesn't do anything, really. It you know, there's some stance specific combos, but you know, those aren't really relevant or useful at all. So, you know, you don't really need to worry about this doing anything at all. Um, but it will be useful because that is used for your X ray move, which we will get to shortly. But as far as throws go, those aren't really dedicated to a button. Uh, luckily, on the 360 controller, they just map the input of. Uh, the 1 plus 3 into right bumper, so you can just do uh, first right bumper to throw. And now, see that that previous throw changed positions, you know, I was on the right and now I'm on the left. Uh, but if I want to keep the same position I have, let's say if I want corner control here um, in the corner and I want to keep him in the corner and I want to use a throw, and just press forward and then stay in the corner. Uh, so if the, this is throw escape, if the uh, opponent is going to do a throw, you know, just press one of those buttons and you'll, uh, you'll attack the throw. Which is very difficult just because there's two types of throws and you know you need to press the right button or press attack the right type of throw, but you know that's all you know a little bit more complicated than I'd like to get into in this video. So here we see uh, an air throw here for Sonya. Just very simple. So Scorpion also had an air throw. Some characters have air throws just pressing a uh, right bumper in the air. Or uh, 1 plus 3 in the air, and sorry, uh, should, should be able to uh, throw for every character that has an air throw. Fight. So here, fortunately they want to make me play with Sonya. She was actually a very strong character in this game. Unfortunately, I am not very good with her. So, you know, let's see how this goes. Need to do these certain commands here. I'm trying to get him to jump so I can do an air throw. There we go. Let's do a regular throw. There we go. And a way throw. Let's throw some projectiles here. Some dive kicks. And how about a cartwheel? So Sonya, you'll, you know, we'll, we'll be playing as most of these characters in story mode, and I'll try to introduce uh, some of their own unique abilities more there. Here in this video, we're just going through the basics, so I won't really get into uh, all of their special moves here. Uh, but this tutorial will, uh, you know, basically uh, just show some off. Like Johnny Cage, for example, has a force ball, has a slip kick, um, a shadow kick, very popular. One of uh, Johnny Cage's most classic moves. Is the shadow kick. So here we have Night Wolf. He has a reflect move that's basically able to reflect projectiles here. And comes in handy. Just especially because it reflects them back fairly quickly, so your opponent can't really react to them. Here I think 
just he has invisibility. Um, I think he just wants me to stay invisible for so many seconds. So there we go. Okay, so now we get to the uh, one of the most important parts of this game, and that is the meter here. So here we have uh, that bar at the a bar at the bottom is basically broken down into three sections, and basically every amount of bar will do will let you allow you to do something different. So uh, here we'll just go through this tutorial, um, and uh, you saw there if you read it, it was just basically how do you gain meter. The way you gain meter is uh, if you do your character's special moves uh, such as you know Johnny Cage's Shadow Kick or Force Ball, you know you do those special moves uh, and you'll build meter. Another way is if you take damage. If you take damage you'll start building meter and the third way is to is by getting your attacks blocked. So if your opponent is constantly blocking your attacks well you know that's you know that's unfortunate in the sense that uh, you're not really getting any combos, but it's good because you're generating offense, you're constantly pressuring them, and you're building meter. And if you have, uh, and you'll see that the more meter you have, uh, it's it becomes a huge advantage. Um, so here we're just going to do a, a bow and arrow. It's what we're just right here. Uh, special move here. So if you keep doing this, it'll, start, it'll build meter for you. Um, so now we have uh, enough meter to do uh, the enhanced version, and this one will... Wow, that one just shot one, and the, the enhanced one will shoot three. There you go. So the that enhanced move uses the one bar of meter. Enhanced moves basically function uh, like the EX moves in Street Fighter, if you're familiar with those. Basically just better versions of your special moves and they use one bar. Uh, so here we'll just go to Johnny Cage's, uh, some of Johnny Cage's special moves. There's two fireballs instead of one for that special move. Enhanced flip kick, heal, adds a... Uh, comes red, adds a shoulder uppercut there. You know, that, that was also an MK2, as well as other some other games, I believe. You know, so that only... In this game, it only comes in as an enhanced flip kick. Here, uh, his last move is the, uh, the shadow kick. And just to shut it up, just to show you uh, that I'm trying to get to generate some space here, because uh, basically the enhanced version just... Uh, it can go a lot further than the original. So here, up. red and does more damage as well. Uh, now here with two bars of meter, that lets you use the breaker. And the breaker is probably by far the most important or the most essential uh, use of meter that you can have. Because it basically lets you break out of any combo that you're in. And the combos in this game can be quite damaging, you know, ranging anywhere from like 35 to 50 percent. Uh, some characters even more. So, you know, being able to break that, break out of that damage, is going to be handy because, uh, you know, in two combos you're dead basically. Um, so you, you're, you at least want to try to have um, a breaker ready. So. Uh, I'll just show you how it works. You know, Sector is going to get me a combo, but I'll quickly break out of it. Of course, it's always better to do this early. It's it's really it's really not worth it to do it late in the combo. It's already eaten 30% damage, and you decide to break while you're only saving yourself another 10% or so. Um, so you know you try to try to do it early. The better it is, the earlier you do it. Uh, so now the third meter. Uh, gives you three full bars. Three full bars will let you do the X-ray attack, which is, you know, a very powerful attack. Unfortunately, uh, just because I said um, the breaker, you know, it'll let you break out of damaging combos. The X-ray, uh, well, let's see how much it does. Kung Lao's X-ray will do, I believe, 31% damage. 
So you're basically using three full bars to do 31% damage, whereas two bars will save you from getting 40% damage done to you. So it's always pretty much more efficient to use the meter for the breaker instead of the x-ray. Um, so the x-ray, however, is useful in certain situations. For example, if x-rays cannot be broken, they, you can't, your opponent can't break out of an x-ray, so it's, say your opponent has enough meter for, to, to break any combo that you do, well you can just do an x-ray and they have to eat that damage. So it becomes a good way to end a round because then there's no, nothing your opponent can do about it. So here we just have this tag stuff here. Uh, I don't think anybody really uh, got into this tag mode on the console version. It, you know, it's just really fun to play with your friends. None of these mechanics really um, uh, do anything. Like, you know, they're not really balanced or uh, anything. Like, you can do some crazy stuff, so nobody really pays attention to this mode, but I'll just quickly go over it. So just tag swab, you can tag uh, in your partner with uh, left bumper on the basic controller. So. Now you also have tag swap attacks where you know while you're while you're fighting Sector you can have uh, you can have Kung Lao come in uh, as Johnny Cage here with an attack instead of just a regular swap. Uh, and then you can have Johnny Cage come in with an attack as well. And they they're all enhanced moves as they should be. You're using a, a bar of meter to to do the swap attack. Um, and another one. So tag assists. Uh, instead of your opponent coming in for this one, they will stay in the back while you continue the fight. So they come out with their hat, but Johnny Cage is still in. But then, and if you want to see Johnny Cage's, we, he will come in with two fireballs. So And here's just basic tag combos, it's just basically strings that end with a tag swap. Um, and I'm not really useful. Mainly when I play tag it's with uh, another friend, and you know they just come in whenever they want, we don't really set these combos up. But each character has their own, you know, basically tag chain into a, into a, into a swap. So, so Alright. So here I'm just gonna have to fight this up there. Let's try the breaker first. I don't really do any combos, so. Seven hit combo because I guess they only want a four hit. Okay. I thought well, that worked. And your enhanced special will do enhanced spin. And your tag special. Tag assist. Let's do an attack as well. Alright, so that does it for this. Uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed that basic uh, tutorial. Um, so my next video will be, a, uh, I'll be playing the story mode. 
and I believe the first character will be Johnny Cage. And so I'll just do a uh, basically a tutorial as we play along as Johnny Cage in the story mode. Um, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this one, like I said, and uh, I will see you for the next video. Thank you.